I'm, I'm from, uh, from a radio station. Uh, my name is Urban Klanschnik. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say that it's a real privilege. And thank you so much for this opportunity. It's not every day that I am working with such legends. So thank That's you very amazing, much. Okay, uh, we can just start, I, I suppose. Um, uh, maybe f this is a question for all of you. Um, what does Dire Straits uh, mean for you guys as a band, you know? Alan, first. What does Dire Straits mean? Well, um, it's been a, um, it's been a good thing for me, that's for sure, because since I joined Dire Straits, I became quite well known, and um, for for my work with Dire Straits, so, uh, still am really. So um, that's what it means, really. Um, it's been a good thing, and it's always it's always a pleasure to play great music and to be involved with great music, and which I was for twelve years with Dire Straits. So. Um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a joy, really. Yeah, I mean, I was I was with the band for uh, for the last tour and part of the the last album on every, every street, and it was a, a fabulous period for me. Uh, two years on the road with uh, Dire Straits, two hundred and fifty or something shows. It was a glorious time in my life, and I never mm. get tired of playing the music. The music's amazing. Mm. The songs are great. Mm. What else? And for me, Dire Straits, you know, it's, uh, I was a big fan of the, of the band, of course, and now I am on stage with this guy. So what else? You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a dream came true. So it's, uh, it's absolutely great and a great responsibility, of course, to be on stage with this guy. And uh, it's always, uh, every show is a dream for me, really. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. what can we expect uh, at the concert in uh, in Ljubljana? Go, Marco. Yeah, we are going to play all the greatest Dire Straits hits. So, songs, classic songs like Sultans of Swing, Town of Love, Private Investigation, Romeo and Juliet, and so on. And, uh, you know, we're going to have two and a half hours show. And we are gonna play, you know, also some surprise, maybe. Who knows? You know, you know, it's um, you know, for sure. I'm sure that all the people who are gonna attend the shows are gonna be very, very, very happy to see this show because uh, people miss Dire Straits music played live a lot to me, and that's why Dire Straits Legacy, you know. It's the main thing of the Dire Straits Legacy you now. It's let's play this music live to the people all around the world. And that's that's it. And you know, to have the, the opportunity to listen to you guys here, it's, yeah, it's yeah. great. I'm I'm having goosebumps yeah, yeah. Uh, already. Yeah. So uh, okay. Um, now a bit a little bit more personal questions, I suppose. <laughs> uh, now when you get on stage. Uh, what would you say the difference between uh, now and when you were younger, uh, let's say in the 80s? Uh, mm. How does it feel now to be on stage? Is, is it different? Do you maybe still have stage fright or something? Do you, uh, you know what I mean? Personally, I, I don't. Um, I look forward to getting on the stage and playing these songs because they're such beautiful pieces. And mm. I always find something interesting and satisfying to play inside them. And that's one of the things that we try to do. I mean, Dire Straits, as a, the original Dire Straits, was an evolving thing. The, the songs would evolve during a tour, and they became the, the standards that they are now. And we still play uh, the long version of uh, Telegraph Road, for example, which can last up to 13 minutes. And it's it's a proper journey and, and a great thing to, to be involved with. That's That's my buzz. The thing about uh, audiences is that uh, I've noticed, at least, that uh, the age ranges haven't really changed. Uh, as as if, you know, there's the, the 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 people that were there the first time around, you know, people of my age, um, and there's there's young young kids, you know, fifteen, sixteen, through their twenties. I mean, that's it's a kind of cross section of of uh, of, of people. And that's very encouraging because that means that the uh, the brand lives on. Mm. Yeah. Um, maybe anyone else? Uh, what do you feel? Uh, I, 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 yeah, Alan. 
I, I forgot forgot what the question it was but so uh, it, how does it feel to be on stage now that you're um you oh know, yes i see um well i feel older <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's, it's exactly the same, really. Um, you know, you, you ask the question, do it, do it, do you get stage fright, nervous, or anything? Um, that kind of goes early on, really early on, you, many, many like decades ago. Because once you've played a certain n number of shows, then you kind of get bored of being, of being, of of being nervous about going on. You know, in front of thousands of people. Um, I used to walk on stage with Dire Straits and think. I should be, I should have, I should, surely I should feel something more than I'm feeling now because it was just like walking into my living room or something because it was, because we played every night hundreds of shows and it just becomes uh, normal. But that doesn't mean, which is, so when you play without that, without that nervousness, then you play much better. Absolutely, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Pressure is a uh, what's a it's a, it's a kind of uh, uh, pressure. Pre no, no, it's a, when you go uh, into the court on the Central Court in New York on U.S. Open, there is a kind of uh, there is a, uh, is a written pressure is a privilege. Ah, that's nice. <laughs> that's a, that's a very nice, very yeah, interesting. That's true. You know? Yeah, it's true, yeah. yeah. Maybe a motivational mm -hmm. thing yeah, yeah. Uh, to some yeah. degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does a mus musician ever stop being a musician? What do you think? No. No. Not for no. me. Not for me. <laughs> I'm 71 and, and mm. I have no thoughts of retiring. Mm. I mean, my body, my body might stop me from, from playing, you know, eventually, mm. but my mind won't. <laughs> You know, uh, I heard once an interview, um, I think it was the uh, the guitarist from uh, Motorhead, uh, when they asked him if uh, Lemmy would ever stop playing. And he said, yeah, they'll have to bury him after, but uh, yeah, he'll stop. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's kind of that what happened, you know. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, what would you say to anyone uh, bitching about uh, Dire Straits without Mark isn't really Dire Straits? Yeah, well, we've heard that before. It, of course, <laughs> it's true to a certain extent. Um, but Marco there is is the best I've ever heard of, of standing in that place and doing what Mark did. And, you know, it, it, it don't get any better than that. And we, we support him in every way that we can musically. I'm gonna uh, pay, doing... pay you later, Phil. Uh, <laughs> <I'm gonna> pay... <laughs> and, and he's doing a great job. I mean, you just simply you can't tell most of the time. Uh, Marco, I absolutely mm. agree. So uh, it's mm. perfect. Now uh, I have a couple of questions for each of you. I hope you don't mind. Uh, Alan, uh, you've been accepted into the Rock and Roll uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, how important are such awards for you? Well, it's it's nice to um, to be to be to have that recognition. Um, I, I must admit, when when it first when it was first put to me, I, I didn't really. I thought, okay, what's that all about? You know, because it's kind of an American thing more than more than um, more than an English thing. But um, the more I sort of thought about it, the more serious it became. So uh, yeah, it's 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 a, it's very nice. I've got what I've got. I have the ward on my mantelpiece up, uh, upstairs in the living room. Uh, you said that it, it's it could be useful if someone you know breaks in and <laughs> you can it use it to be a useful weapon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, Phil, um, you once said, and I think the the numbers are absolutely correct, that you did five hundred uh, album projects and probably over five thousand titles. Uh, you sort of answered this before, but let's do it again. Uh, was there ever a time in your career? That you said to yourself, "That's enough. That you're tired of doing this." No, never. Mm -hmm. I, I look forward <laughs> to the next project. I, I look forward to the next Dire Straits gig. Uh, yeah. I love to play and I love to explore new new avenues and um, and be on stage. It's just my life. I mean, I love I love everything about it. I'm probably very lucky. 
So uh, you're going for a uh, thousand album projects and uh, over 10,000 titles. That's... Well, why not? Come on, let's keep going. <laughs> I would totally agree. I, I even think mm -hmm. that uh, it wouldn't be enough. So, <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Marco, mm -hmm. uh, now uh, you're one of the probably the only one um, that uh, I'm really sorry, but uh, you're you're known for being one of the few players uh, who actually mastered uh, Mark Knopfler's unique playing style. Mm. How, how does one achieve that? No, it's uh, I, I was simply loving Mark, you know, since I was a kid. You know, it's uh, when I was starting playing guitar, I was 12 years old, I think, and I was start watching, you know, Mark playing in a live uh, alchemy tour, you know, kind of this, and and so this music, this kind of guitar playing was in my art since the beginning, you know, I thought I, um, I became a man, you know, <laughs> and um, this music was always inside me and inside my art. You know? And that's, so to me, it's kind of easy to be on stage playing this music, playing Mark's licks, you know, and um, because it's, uh, I, I always have it, this in, in my heart. A funny story, I was, you know, it's, um, I was in New York in 2001 and I was in Rudy's Music Shop, it's a great guitar shop in New York, and I was there with Rudy Penster and Mark Knopfler, you know, it's, uh, we were in the private room playing guitars, you know, and, you know, and uh, at some point me and Mark start, start and play together, you know, and uh, and Mark watching me, I say, Marco, what are you playing? You know, and I said, Mark, you did this in a, in a, in a show in, a, in 1991. I say, oh, fucking great. You know, so, <laughs> so it's, you know, because I was, you know, I was studying Mark, you know, Mark style. And um, because I, I was playing also, you know, when I was a kid, I was playing this music in a club here in Italy. And I was having... You know, a, a cover band you now plays playing this music. You know, and and at some point in 2009, and you know, my dream became true. You know, and so the Dire Straits legacy is a is a great dream for me. You know, it's it's easy. And yeah, I was, I, I can't say it's easy, but uh, I have uh, I all have this in my heart. That's the only way. You know, it's passion. Passion, yeah, yeah. You which is, I mean, which always, is the, well, always believe in your dreams, you know, it's a kind of, you know. Dream big. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Alan, uh, you, you wanted to say something? Well, it's just, the, it's the same for, that. that's the reason why we all do it. it it's, it becomes, it's an obsession. It's a love. It's, it's, uh, it's a, it's the most important thing in our lives, really. You know what I think uh, about Dire Straits is when, when you listen to, to your music, it sounds kind of simple. And I don't mean that in a bad way. But you know, when you get uh, into deeper into your music and study it, and of course, if you play an instrument, uh, then you actually understand what you know Mark did and what you all did. And uh, it's it's very, very complicated. Yeah, in reality. Okay, complicated let me just... on many levels as well, because... Uh... The dynamics within the Dire Straits catalog is is one of the most important things that we work on, you know, because it's uh, th those the the Rallentandos and the, uh, and the and the dynamics of the, of the music is what makes it great, and we work really hard at getting those exactly right. Mm 